if you follow my channel, you probably have a NAS, a network attached storage. But there's another type of storage called a DAS, a direct attached storage. If you're in the IT world, you've probably heard of this as a disk shelf connected over something like SAS or Fiber Channel. And those are relatively complicated, but you can get them on eBay, etc. This is not that. This is a consumer or small business DAS that uses modern USB 3, 10 gigabit. So essentially in this box, there's a case that holds six three and a half inch hard drives and passes them through over USB for you to do whatever you want with. So if you have an existing NAS, maybe a two bay TerraMaster like I had in a previous video that I use as my home server now, or maybe you want to set up a Proxmox backup server with a separate storage pool, or a Zima board that doesn't have enough IO, this can let you add more disks to your existing NAS, or your existing uh, storage system on the cheap pretty easily. And it looks pretty good too. So let's take a look at this. What is this? D6320 from TerraMaster. Probably has all the accessories. And the unit itself. It's not that big. Let's get it out of its bag. Where is the opening? This is what we got. So six drive bays on the front that are hot swappable. Let's see, pull this out. Is this toolless? Yep, sure looks toolless. Let's try to put a drive in. So this is a random WD red I have for testing. Does it just pop in there? Just pops right in there. Boom, that was easy. Uh, I've used TerraMaster's other toolless systems on my NAS in the closet, the video on that one. And this is even easier, it just pops in. So on the back, it is pretty darn bare. So DC 12 volt jack and USB-C 10 gigabit. That's it. So we'll see later how they show up in Linux because we're gonna do all of our testing in Linux, of course. This does not have any built-in hardware RAID. It just passes through all the individual disks to the operating system. So you could use this with something like TrueNAS or ZFS that's partic particular, but having direct hardware access to all the drives, you'll get that with this. You'll still get USB, which might not be your favorite connector, but hardware access, you got it. And what about the accessory box? Phillips screwdriver. Am I supposed to take the side off or something? Let's see what's on the side. They gave us a screwdriver, so why not? Oh yeah, I'm probably not supposed to take this off. There's nothing in here. It's bare. Got a power supply. Power supply is 12 volt, 10 amp, 120 watt. That's a lot. Probably for the drives though, because this many drives alone would probably take I mean, what they're what, 12 watts each for drives? You're looking at like 75 watts in drives if the drives are all at full power. Yeah, I can see why they put a 120 watt brick in. Power cable for the brick. And USB C to USB C. And a bunch of screws for the drives. I'm guessing the screws are in case you want to put a two and a half inch drive in. If I pull out one of the trays again, this tray is empty. Yeah, so if you put a two and a half inch drive in, you need screws from the bottom. If you put a three and a half inch drive and it's toolless, it just snaps in. So I'm gonna put both types in, we'll see how it works. It's got a bit of a mishmash of drives here. Got three two terabyte WD reds, a one terabyte WD blue two and a half inch. This thing is a no name Amazon brand, two terabyte SATA SSD. I have no hopes for it of being good, but we'll see. And a random five terabyte Seagate desktop drive that I had laying around. So that makes six, let's put them in. So they include two different sizes of screws, which is nice. One says for three and a half inch hard drive on the bag. So these are probably 632. Another says for two and a half inch. So they would be either an M3 or a 440. I'm not sure what the correct size is for that, but they're smaller. Hard drives look so comically small in this case, but uh, it's the perfect size for three and a half inch drive. So according to this handy picture here, the top row is one, two, three, and the bottom row is four, five, six. So I should have three two terabyte drives and one, two, three. Those are hard drives. The two terabyte SSD, the one terabyte three, uh, two and a half inch drive, and a five terabyte in four, five, and six. 
So I'm going to plug it into my mini lab here, the box PC that sits on a cardboard box. And I hope it supports USB 3.10 gig because then I'll have to dig out a computer that does. If it doesn't, USB 3 is a mess with all this. USB 3.2 Gen 1, Gen 2 by 2, Gen 2. Why can't you just say 5 gig, 10 gig, 20 gig? That's plugged in and the power supply. Okay, it's got a power button. It'd be nice if it didn't and it just turned on. But. Future Apple Art here. It does in fact power itself back on automatically after a power outage if it was on before. Just so you know. Oh, there's little lights in the front too. That's cool. You can see these here. Lights on the front of each drive. And they're blinking. Currently we're using 34 watts. Drives are spinning up probably. So now that all the drives are here, let's take a look at how it looks in Linux. So I got my Proxmox system boot up. Let's see what it looks like over here in Linux. So here under disks, we've got all the disks. So SDA is my boot drive. B, C, D, E, F, and G. That is the new DAS. So you can see I've got the three two terabyte WD Reds, the Seagate five terabyte desktop drive, the one terabyte laptop drive, and the two terabyte SSD, they're all here. And run lsusb-t, that'll give us a tree. And so here's how it actually looks like USB-wise. So this is the USB port on the motherboard. So it's running at 10,000 megs, so 10 gig. That goes to this device, which is a hub, 10 gigabit hub. And then off the hub, we have a mass storage device, which is UAS. So UAS is part of the USB 3 standard. It's called USB Attached SCSI. And it basically lets you tunnel SCSI or SATA commands over USB. It's basically used for all USB storage at USB 3 at this point. The USB mass storage device from USB 2 is kind of not as popular. But uh, you can bridge SATA and SCSI devices to USB with UAS without needing a driver on the host side. So they're using a UAS chip to go from USB 3 to SATA. They're using six of those chips and two four port hubs to make their USB enclosure. So there's no RAID. All of these support 10 gig, although SATA is only six gig, so be aware of that. Um, you're not gonna saturate all six of the drives if they're all SSDs. If they're all hard drives, you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to saturate all of them. So, yeah. So given that the drives show up here, I'm gonna put them in a ZFS pool. So I already have my R pool, that's what I'm booting from. Let's see, come on, buddy. I'm gonna call this D pool for data. And we're gonna use S, D, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And single disk, because we don't need no uh, data security. We like to be risky. What? What is this? So given that the GUI didn't want to create a single disk pool with a bunch of disks, because that's really risky and you shouldn't do it, I'm going to do it anyway from the command line. So got that right, B, C, D, E, F, and G. What? Oh, have a trailing slash. Please protect your data. Don't use a six wide stripe. That's a bad idea. Yeah, whatever. Ignore the errors. There we go. So you are now a pool. You just need to become a storage. Storage add ZFS D pool, thin provision. Yes. So now that I have my data pool in Proxmox off my USB storage, I have some options. I could just create normal VMs and stuff on it, or I could create a container for Proxmox backup server that would use the dpool directly. Let's try that. So over here, I've got the installation guide for Proxmox. It's just pbs to proxmox.com docs installations. And we're gonna install it on top of Debian. So we're gonna use the package repositories for apt and install it in an LXC container. Unprivileged is fine. Debian 12 standard, so that's bookworm. And we'll create, I don't know, 16 gig root drive with no A time. And 
2000 gig. So creating a separate mount point for the data makes it easier later if I need to recover. I can delete the original root file system, reinstall Proxmox backup server if necessary, and then point it to the path for the second mount point as the data directory. So we're up here in Debian. Coming back here, we need the release signing key for Proxmox bookworm. So we'll just run that command. And then we need the no subscription repository, which is this one. So then if we scroll down a little bit further, it tells us there are a couple of different options. So we can install Proxmox Backup Server, which just installs the server itself, or Proxmox Backup, which installs the full kernel and everything the installer would install. So since we're running in a container, I'm gonna do Proxmox Backup Server. Now we just have to wait for it to install. So now that this is done, we can open it up in a web browser. So don't forget we're on port 8007 this time. Looks like we came up, we need to add a data store. What do I call this? Mount backup. Big drive pool. Oh yeah. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add it to my Proxmox server and have it back up itself onto itself, just to see what it looks like. Have back up its own root drive, not its own data drive. That would be recursive, which would probably not end well. Realistically, if you're running PBS on a container like this, you should back up everything except PBS. You don't wanna have it recurse into itself. And if you need to restore later, if your Proxmox VE system goes down, you should be able to mount a new Proxmox backup system by mounting the file system in ZFS. So I did some testing off camera, and with this zpool of a RAID 0, which is a terrible way for data security, I was able to push around 1,000 to 1,500 megabytes per second to the pool. So clearly we're able to saturate the 10 gig link, 10 gigabit USB, and uh, that's good enough for me. So this device is really capable of high speed bandwidth with spinning drives. I don't imagine you'd be using it with SSDs, but um, it works for that. I have an SSD in there and it works fine. So uh, yeah. So I've been testing this USB DAS with ZFS and it's been working just fine for pretty much everything I've tested. On Proxmox with Proxmox backup server, different containers, different load tests, it's all working great. The one thing I tested that did not work well was doing USB pass through to TrueNAS. I know some people really like using TrueNAS in a virtual machine instead of just doing ZFS and Proxmox. And passing through the six individual disks as USB devices was not a good uh, experience. As to the functionality of the unit, it's working well. If you need to expand the storage on your NAS, add a second ZFS pool for backups, something like that, this is definitely a great option to consider. It's reasonably priced for storage, for six drives. You can fill it pretty darn big. It's got a big enough power supply to run those kind of drives, spinning disks. The USB 3 bandwidth is adequate for six spinning drives. Not really for SSDs, but this would not be something you'd use with SSDs anyway, probably. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with it. It's small, it doesn't look bad. Well, I mean, I'm comparing it to my PC in a box and my old VGA monitor, but uh, yeah, looks pretty good. So as always, if you want to chat more with me, you can find me on my Discord server, link down below in the description. I also have a Ko-fi. Feel free to tip me there if you find my videos useful. I appreciate it. And uh, I have a website too. I don't think I'm going to make a blog post for this one because there's not really any commands, but um, I have a blog. Um, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.